What's the number one agricultural export in California? Don't Google it. Leave a comment below if you think you know. Spoiler alert, it's not grapes. The second largest California export is grapes. California produces 99% of all of the olive oil made in the United States, but it's not their number one agricultural export. California produces only 1% of the world's olive oil. So many of you wanted to see a California olive oil in my review of inexpensive olive oils. I took a trip out west so that I could find out if California olive oils compare in taste and quality with European olive oils. My trip to California was magical from San Francisco to Sausalito to all over Sonoma and Napa County. And while we were tasting some amazing wines, we found out that vineyards and olive groves go hand in hand. I couldn't think of two better reasons to visit Napa and Sonoma. Many wineries in the two counties also produce olive oil, from the ones that pioneered winemaking in America like Gergich Hill, to the gorgeous vistas that produce elegant Jordan wines, wineries like Benzinger. Even the manager of the Doobie Brothers had his hand in both wine and olive oil production. Yes, the jacuzzi family that invented the jacuzzi hot tub has an olive grove. I was on a mission to sample California's great wines, uh, I mean olive oils. While I was there, I googled olive oil manufacturers near me and found several that were within an hour drive. Now because many of the wineries showcase their Italian heritage, you would think that Italians were the first to grow olives in California, but it was actually Spanish missionaries in the late 18th century. After the California gold rush in the mid 1860s, commercial olive groves were planted. The most interesting olive oil producer I found is unmistakably Italian. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the history of this place. Well, as you can see by the structure, it used to be a barn. In 1931, was turned into an olive oil factory. You can see the press, uh, the crush in the press. That time, olive oil wasn't that popular. The idea of an olive oil used to be the lighter, the better. The old man had a business in San Francisco. He left his two younger brothers there, and he would go and bring back cheese and salami, pasta products that up here were not available. And to this day, local people call this the cheese factory instead of a olive oil factory. The olive oil. A few miles away was Long Meadow Ranch. Back in 1989, we didn't even know that there's olive grove trees on our Rutherford State property. That property was created by a gentleman named E.J. Church. So he's responsible for bringing some vineyards, uh, vineyard plants, and uh, planting the olive grove trees that we use. Since Prohibition, he sold the property, and the property was mismanaged and unkept. Tumbled around different ownerships for decades. We had to clean up the property, and we found these groves. So we were curious about them, sent some samples out to UC Davis, and they said that we rediscovered extinct genetics that date 150 year old. So that's also where the name comes from. Pratolungo means Long Meadow Ranch in Italian because we got to rename them as well. In downtown Sonoma, we tasted olive oil at one of the more well-known producers tasting room, Fagone. And just outside the town of Sonoma is the Jacuzzi Family Winery and Olive Press. The brand of hot tub Jacuzzi was founded by seven brothers who were trying to ease the pain of one of the brothers who suffered from rheumatoid arthritis. Already experts in hydraulics, they invented the J300, a portable pump with the power to transform any normal bath into a relaxing and rejuvenating hydrotherapeutic spa. But the greatest treat was meeting Musa. Musa is the owner and founder of Hussari Olive Oil. He makes olive oil from olive tree clones he imported from Palestine and Israel. He was in the process of pouring a slab for his new olive press facility, so he invited me into his home to taste his olive oils. I came here on groundbreaking day. It looks yeah. like you're building your own facility so that you could mill on state. That must be super exciting. It's a real huge jump in progress. It's a big deal. It's a big. This is a big day, actually. Uh, it's kind of coincident, coincidental that you're here. Um, but yeah, we're pouring uh, 
our slab today. We'll start building here in the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, we'll be milling on site, as you'll see on our website, uh, milling uh, at the end of this year. So tell me a little bit about the varietal of olive that you use for your olive oil. Uh, yeah, so currently we're using a, a Mediterranean blend of, of olives. I mean, Mediterranean meaning the, the origin of the olives are from there. Frantoio is an Italian olive, Licino, the Arbequina, Piqual. We also have some Kalamata trees that we, that we pick from. That's not currently in this bottle, but... Um, uh, it's it's just something that's that's Mediterranean origin, and we 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 uh, put them together, and, and we end up with this great product. All grown here, all grown in Sonoma County. All grown in Sonoma, all County. Grown in Sonoma County. If you go to the supermarket in Sonoma County, this is probably the only olive oil you'll see on the shelf that is made with olives grown in Sonoma County. We, we currently have two varieties that come from the homeland, from Jerusalem. You know, they're a Palestinian olive tree. So I was able to get these trees. Currently, we're propagating and rooting and cloning new trees. And so our next ranch that we plant we're, are going to be two varieties, the Nabali and the Suri. Uh, Suri and Nabali are, are what's believed to be in the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem and found throughout uh, the region. Very cool. Yeah. All right, let's give this a taste. I'm All excited. Right. We do oil and, and zatat here. A pretty good taste, but oil alone is probably where, where we want to do as well. I'm going to try the oil first, yeah. and I'm definitely going to try that. Is, mm -hmm. that. is that your own blend? That's from the homeland. Cool. Yeah. All right. So, that is delicious. California is a big state and I didn't have enough time to travel everywhere, so I ordered some olive oil from two of the largest producers of olive oil in the state, California Olive Ranch and McAvoy Ranch. Before I review these olive oils, I would like to thank Eno, a viewer now friend who generously sent me this olive oil produced by his family in Italy along with this footage. This olive oil is spectacular and it is just as good as the olive oil that I purchase from my friend each year. This is the 2022 vintage of olive oil that I receive from a friend each year who produces this olive oil privately in Greece. Let me be more clear about this because this olive oil caused some confusion in my previous video. This olive oil, it's not for sale. It's privately grown in Greece. I get it from a friend. It's magnificent. It's my reference standard. I want to find a California olive oil that is commercially available that tastes like this one and recommend it to you so that you can get an olive oil that is just as delicious as this one. I'm going to be reviewing 10 olive oils here. Eight out of the 10 were harvested and pressed in late 2022, October, November. The only two that were not were the California Olive Ranch. And I was a little disappointed about that because I had specifically asked them to send me the 2022 press and I got the 2021. Nothing really that I can do about that right now. Jordan, Benzinger, and Longmeadow Ranch were still in production or out of stock, so I will not be reviewing them this time around. The olive oils here are much more expensive than olive oil you can purchase in a supermarket or at a wholesale club, but they vary in price. They average around $25 to $30 for half a liter or just over 17 fluid ounces. Now, a lot of people are concerned about olive oils being cut with other oils or what is being referred to commonly online as fake olive oil. They are easy to spot. Usually they're very inexpensive and have no certification of authenticity on the bottle. They are a no-name brand or branded with a supermarket name. They'll use word phrases on the label like light olive oil or they will have photos of olives on the label with the word contains olive oil somewhere in small print. But most people are fooled into buying an expensive olive oil thinking they're getting the real deal just because it's more expensive. I think that's easier to pull off than the so-called fake olive oils that are on the market because you're not buying quality you're buying marketing. So I did a whole video on what makes a true olive oil great, and there are a number of factors and specs that most producers just don't give you, except the most exceptional producers. A link to that video is available at the end of this video, but at the bare minimum, here are a few things you should know before you buy an olive oil. When was it produced? Olive oil taste absolutely fades with time, and so do the healthy biophenols in the olive oil. I would not buy an olive oil that I cannot finish within a year of the production date. If I buy an olive oil manufactured in October of 2022, I want it finished by October of 2023. Number two, unfiltered olive oil may taste great, it also spoils more quickly. Filtration is a big deal because if you don't filter your olive oil and it's unfiltered, the sediment that is in the olive oil 
will deteriorate the olive oil. I love unfiltered olive oil, but if I buy some, I keep it cold around 55 degrees Fahrenheit in a dark place, and I finish it within three months of production. Number three, buy from producers that have a production facility on their grove. The olives are picked, you're coming in within, you know, really within hours, but you definitely want to come in within a day. The best olive oil is made from freshly picked olives. Small producers will turn their olives into olive oil within 24 hours or less of harvest. Number four, develop a relationship with the person or company you are buying your olive oil from. You would be surprised at how easy it is to find out details about the oil you are buying from the company representative. If you're going to spend the money, make it worth your health. If you want to know more about understanding the technical specs when buying olive oil, watch that video at the end of this video. I did not receive any money to represent these companies. I also purchased each and every one of these olive oils with my own money. Now, as of the making of this video, I don't make any commission on any of the olive oils that I list in the description below, except for affiliate links from Amazon, but most of the olive oils here aren't even available on Amazon. Before I taste any of these olive oils, I'm going to compare them to this one. This is the private label one that I absolutely love. To me, it is a 10 out of 10, and that's just my personal taste, so I'm giving this a 10. And I'm going to score the rest of these olive oils based on that one. I was super curious about tasting this olive oil. This is one of the few that I didn't have a chance to taste in California because that store was so funky. It's really good. It's not spectacular. It's not phenomenal. Certainly does not compare to Enzo's. And by the way, Enzo's olive oil, I would give a solid nine and a half out of 10 because I just love the flavor of Greek olive oils and Italian olive oils to me have a pepperiness to them that not that pepperiness that you get from biophenols, but just a peppery flavor that I don't really like so much as I, I mean, I like it, but I really like the Greek olive oil better. Now this one here, this was magnificent. This was truly one of my favorite olive oils that I may have ever had in my life. That smells wild. It's got like hints of rosemary, thyme. I'm actually smelling like orange in there. It's amazing. It's got just the right amount of biophenols. It's creamy, it's luscious. You would have told me this was made in California. I really wouldn't believe it. I would give this a 10 out of 10. Man, this is really great stuff. This is wonderful, wonderful olive oil. I purchased two olive oils from California Olive Branch. This is the Reserve Arbasana. It's made from Arbasana grapes, pressed in 2021. Let's see if that's affected the flavor at all. Hmm. That really has a beautiful scent as well. It smells magnificent. It smells like it's floral. The smell of Pasithia. It's decent olive oil. I really would have wished it was a 2022. Definitely has uh, peppery biophenols. Kind of leaves a flatness in your mouth. It's not terribly complex. I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10. This is the second California olive branch. It's also reserved. It's an Arbequina. Essences of melon a little bit. Has a as typical Arbequina essence, the same uh, scent that I'm used to when I consume a Arbequina olive, either if it's from the United States or Europe. All I'm getting are biophenols. Um, there's absolutely no flavor that's imparting in my mouth. No, nope, not even really a tremendous amount of olive. It's okay. I, I would probably give this one a five out of 10. Now this I did taste. This was a Tuscan blend extra virgin olive oil from Fagones. Kind of almost smell a little bit of strawberry. This is really, really good. I'm getting flavors of red bell pepper, a really nice blend of Italian olives in there. There is a significant amount of biophenols, but they're not very peppery. I would give this like an 8.8. .8. Really nice. This is the Mission Manzanillo, a one straight olive, cold pressed, unrefined. Wow, powerhouse of olives on the nose. Almost smells like Kalamata olives from Greece. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit of anise, a celery, some tomato. It's really nice. It's buttery. It's a little different than the flavor of the Tuscan blend. I prefer the Tuscan blend a little bit more. I'm gonna give this one like a 8.5. Gergich Hill. If you don't know about Michael Gergich, I suggest you Google him and take a look at his accomplishments. He's turning 100 April 1st. He's the founding father of really good quality wines in, or one of the founding fathers of really good quality wines in, in California. If you ever heard of The Judgment of Paris, if you haven't, you really should look it up because it's a phenomenal story about how he was the winemaker for Chanteau Montalena in a blind tasting beat out 
the French wines in France. It's a great story. I highly recommend you check it out. This I did not have the pleasure of tasting. As a matter of fact, this wasn't even being sold when I went and I bought it. They pulled it from the back because they hadn't even had time to put it out on the shelves yet. I'm getting orange zest, a little bit of lime. It's like a strong, nutty flavor. It's got a complex finish, right? It's like a little bit bitter, almost like, it's almost got this complexity, like typical Gurgachill wines. They leave a wonderful finish in your mouth. It's very, very creamy and buttery. It's not the, the polyphenols that are um, bitter. It, the flavor is a little bitter and strong. Nonetheless, though, I think it's very, very good. So I'm going to give this one an 8.7. This is a Pequal, and if you watch my other video, I... Oh, you motherless... <laughs> broke my favorite bottle of Pequal, which was kind of bad. This is the Olive Press. That's the Jacuzzi brand. They actually have a school there. They teach people how to taste olive oil. I wasn't around long enough to sit in on a class. I would have loved to really aromatic I, that's what i love about pequal it's got a buttery scent to it wow yeah that's that's pequal <laughs> i mean you can smell it super buttery again uh, uh, you could taste almost like the finish is almost like you're sucking on um, the pit N not that that's a horrible thing it's a really really nice olive oil it's very enjoyable not really one of my favorite pequals but it is it's pretty nice i'm going to give this one an eight D.R. Cohn, he was the manager of the Doobie Brothers. It's organic, and this too, 2022. Maybe I'm getting a little sweetness to it, almost like the, I can't, I'm not smelling cinnamon, but you know the sweetness that you get when you do smell cinnamon, like in the back of your mouth, you feel like you're tasting something sweet. I'm getting that in the Roma, but I can't place where it's from. Super buttery, really nice mouthfeel, really clean, nice finish. It kind of stands out because it's very smooth and complex throughout the whole taste very mild biophenols. It's really nice. Um, I'm going to give this one an 8.2. When I bought this one here, the McAvoy Ranch, <laughs> it wasn't looking at the size. So I got the one that they allow you to put in your carry. -on. <laughs> so this is a blend. It's certified organic. So that's good. Let's see how it does. I think McAvoy Ranch may be the largest producer of olive oil in all of California. That I'm not sure of. Wow. I'm getting bay leaves. Summer squash. Wow. Powerful biophenols right off the top. I mean, if you're into biophenols, <coughs> this one this is the first one out of all of these that is actually making me cough. Watch that other video I did. Doesn't necessarily mean that the biophenols aren't there in the other ones. It just means that these are peppery. It's very strong. It's actually um, feeling, it's, wow. <coughs> this has got very high biophenols. If you like that, then I think you would really do well with this. Um, the flavor is not bad besides that, but it definitely dominates the flavor. It's really, really strong, really pungent, really bitter. And I'm not tasting any of the scents that I was smelling. I'm gonna try one more time. So if you are a biophenol fanatic and you like that pepperiness, then I would probably give this a nine. Um, if you don't, then I would give this a six because I'm not tasting anything other than the peppery flavor that comes with a very strong biophenol. So here are my favorite three. Number one, by a landslide. This is my favorite. I would buy this all day long. I might even consider putting it into on my menu at the restaurant. Is the Hussery, spectacular. I really like the Tuscan blend of the Fagones olive oil, and I really, really like the Gurga Chill. Special mention would be the McAvoy Ranch, uh, the thimble size that I bought. It's really, really, really strong polyphenols. I know a lot of you like that, so I would recommend that if you like that. And I also would like to mention that I think the California olive oil would be better if it was not a year old. Uh, I wish I had the right vintage, so that's not totally fair. Um, but uh, even, even unopened, which you saw that I opened them on camera, they just were not in the league of these olive oils here. For the most part, these olive oils were delicious and are really finishing oils. But does that mean that you can't cook with them? Not necessarily. I'll explain in a second, but first, What's the number one agricultural export of California? It's dairy. But the number one export of California overall is computers and electronics. And here's a fun fact. The third largest service export in the United States, media and art. Film and intellectual property. Our films, art, and entertainment are revered all over the world. Now, to truly know if you can cook with your olive oil or one of these, 
you need to know a specific number. It's called the FFA number. The lower that number is, the better the quality of the olive oil and the higher the smoke point. There's more great info here. Click on one of these and leave a comment. Let me know what you enjoy or think. Cheers.